Hey, it's Ed with Slow Car Fix. I'm working on my 55 again, finally. Uh, been busy with work, busy getting stuff ready for winter, but uh, I'm getting back at it just a little bit today. I have made some progress. I figured out my last problem with the uh, tail pan, and uh, I want to carry on and show you guys what I'm doing. So, this is my 55 Chevy four-door to two-door, four-door to, yeah, four-door to two-door. How many doors? Uh, conversion that I'm in the midst of and have been for quite some time. So, I had a problem last time, and my problem was that uh, this trunk lid was sitting too high and on both sides, and that I had a giant gap right Right around here. So what I discovered, there's a lot of things. You can see I have a precarious jack holding up my quarter panel, some lumber. Uh, I cut out the tail pan. I had the tail pan tacked in. I had these corner pieces here, all right here tacked in. Uh, I cut them all back out um, because what I had discovered was when I was chasing the endless amount of rot that was here and I went up, I probably went too high. And it was hard to tell because down here is not, was nothing, it was all gone. Um, so I was really guessing where uh, like this panel was supposed to be. So I've had a rethink and the problem is I don't really know, you know, really it should be right there-ish which is about a half an inch lower from where I was. But rather than guess on side to side and uh, potentially make more of a mess than I've already got, uh, I spent more money. There's a piece they make that includes this tail light piece. Um, it's half here and half here and it's got the shape of the tail light. Now it's gonna be more work for me to install, but in the long run, it's actually less work because um, what I've got, uh, what I will have then is I've got a fixed point that I can work from. I can work from this tail light space because this hasn't moved. Now mind you, it will move a little up and down with the jack, but I will make it in the right spot. But the location of the sheet metal um, will actually be a fixed point because I can go from this tail light area where it's all kind of solid on both sides and then work down from there. And then I've got a fixed distance from here down to where the tail pan's gonna connect. And then the same on the other side. Uh, and then it's less of a guessing game when I go to do the, the quarter panel pieces, these outside pieces, when I go to affix them later on, uh, it's less of a guess because this will be in the right spot. This, this little hump here will be in the right spot everything will sort of be in the right spot and it gives me two fixed working points to work from. It wasn't cheap, uh, the parts aren't here yet, so I can't really work on it right yet. So basically this is like working from, uh, once I do this, I, I'll be able to square them side to side um, because like I said, nothing was attached at the back, nothing, everything was just, the whole car was sitting on top of the leaf purchase, the leaf spring purchase. It was just the whole back of the car was sagged and, and it wasn't really clear uh, where anything was supposed to be. Hopefully I can still save this tail pan that I had tacked in before. Um, and then I also bought the inner pieces, the inner corners that are the, that go there. I got them all from Cars Inc. They're very good to deal with. Um, they've been very fair to me and uh, pretty quick turnaround on stuff. And really their products I found so far have been fairly accurate, mind you. I don't have anything really finished welded in but so far I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the quality as far as aftermarket panels go. So now my trunk is fitting properly. Uh, I'm gonna be a couple of weeks getting those parts. So I've got that all figured out. Okay, so you can see the lower quarter, quarters are just sitting there. They're just uh, clamped on. Um, but I've gotta take care of this guy here. Um, and 
I got to work, do the work behind it at some point. So I'm not really sure when I want to start this part here, if I'm going to start that today or not. I've only got a couple hours to work on it. Uh, fortunately, my work, my day job work is going to slow down soon. So when it slows down, I'll be able to pick up in here. Uh, also, driving season's pretty much done. So um, I have this door in here. I got to skin, pull the skin off of it. I should really get the skin off of it today and then I can get the door outside out of my way uh, for when the, the weather comes. I'm hoping to take this over to here, to this line, and I can get rid of this dent. Um, and then I'll just go right to where I've already finished welded this. I'll just cut that out and I'll go straight down and, I'll, and I will take it all the way down to behind this piece here. Um, so that way uh, my, my, I'll just have one weld on the bottom and I won't have to, you know, just weld here and then weld down here. I'll just have the one weld at the bottom and the two vertical welds. And uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. Other than that, this side looks okay-ish. Uh, the other side where I did the same trick by using the uh, the door skin actually looks pretty good. But I the same thing, I've got to finish welding this. Uh, that side's finished welded. I've got to do some hammer and dolly work. Um, I, I was working on getting the lows out of it. I've got the layout, die cam layout blue, uh, but I've got to carry this all the way across here. That's not too bad to deal with. The other thing is that once I get into taking these lower quarters off, I have to really get serious about what's going on with these wheel wells because uh, they're shit. Um, it's rotten in the trunk area, it's rotten here, and somebody's just been fiberglassing that. Um, really, I either need to move these wheel tubs in and, and do some wet welding there, or I need to get new complete wheel tubs, which are very expensive. Um, that one over there has a pile of fiberglass in the corner, uh, so I gotta do that. I gotta get rid of that crap. And then, uh, yeah, the other thing is this floor itself is sitting kind of high so um, it's only just tacked in at the front and tacked in at the back so once I get these uh, get some progress here and I put the rocker panel on this side then I have to uh, probably I think I probably have to pick the car up a little bit and and have the rockers line up with the floor that's a whole nother explanation and a bit bigger problem so Goal is to have the metal work done this winter. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? And have it looking more like a car. It's a ton of work to do on this thing. So I think what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna start with finishing this passenger side, or sorry, this, what is this side? This is the driver's side. Finish the driver's side welding um, where I patched in that panel. And then when I get tired of welding, cause that does happen, uh, I'll skin that door because I really want to get that door skinned. I'll show you guys how I skin a door. I might have shown that before. There's lots of videos on it. Really, you just grind the edges off the panel and take the skin off. But I got to take all the trim off of it first.
So this welding helmet, this Miller helmet that uh, I just bought from a friend of mine. Now I borrowed this one. I've got a lot of welding helmets, but uh, I borrowed that one off a friend of mine because my other one I was using for work regularly. So I borrowed it a while ago when I built the International. Uh, when I put uh, uh, 51 International on a, on a 98 Dodge Dakota RT chassis, the welding helmet. I bought it from my friend Andy Wilson. Now, the interesting thing about this, and I'm going to drop a, a link in the description of this video for his YouTube channel. Andy worked with me at my day job, and uh, when I first started working at the company, he was uh, very welcoming, and he's a really good guy, and, and uh, I really enjoyed his character and his company. But anyways, he uh, is doing something crazy, and I admire him for it. He quit his day job, really good job, uh, sold his house, uh, split with his fiance, and he has gone on his KTM, I think it's a 500, uh, enduro type dirt bikey motorcycle y thing. And he's riding from here in Ontario, Canada, about 20, his house was about 20 minutes from, half hour from my house. He's riding from here to South America. Uh, last I talked to him, which was yesterday, he was somewhere in Arizona. Um, crazy stuff. He's documenting it all on his YouTube channel. Um, so check that out. There's going to be a link in the description. Really cool story. Uh, interesting dude. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. If you uh, enjoy my very dry and uninteresting sense of humor, he's a lot more entertaining. Okay, so I'm going to have more work to do here. I've got a little more welding to do on each side, but I really want to have a good idea of what's high and what's low. So I sprayed some dye chem, it's layout blue for like machining. So uh, you see kind of what I got going on here. I think I said in one of my other videos that this is kind of ideal where you have a little valley and it's, and it's got the blue there. Um, but it acts like a guide coat, this die chem. And it's, it's, that, this is what it's for. It's for, uh, well, it's for machining mostly and uh, for finding your highs and lows when you're machining something. Um, but uh, I use it on metalwork on cars. Now, I don't usually get into this much metalwork on cars. I, I've done lots of little patches and lots of whatever. I haven't done you know, building a car from parts of shit and, and making something out of it. Um, so, but if you look down the panel, it's pretty good. It's not bad. I was doing pretty good with heat management. If you notice that I used my hand a whole bunch and I would just go, you know, like this because I wanted to see that I'm not getting too much heat in this panel. Like I said, I'm no expert uh, with uh, uh, body metal. But um, I know the, I, if I don't want to warp the panel, I got to keep it cool. So I've got to stitch, I've got to clean up all this and stitch all this up. I've got a little bit of hammer work to do here before I can do that. I know I'm getting spatter on the windshield. People have commented that before. I screwed this windshield early on. 
uh, was spatter, or this uh, back glass was spatter. So my bad, uh, I was thinking that I'm getting new glass anyways and didn't really care or didn't think about it, but I screwed it for somebody else because I could have sold it and, uh, and got some money out of it. So that's unfortunate, but so if you see me still getting spatter on it, that's because it's already screwed. Um, you know, and you can see me working with the Sharpie like I did it here where I've got the highs and the lows where I'm working at. I'm getting way too finicky at this point. Um, so I still have more work to do in this area. But you know, that's, that's getting pretty good. That weld is a little proud there. You can see where the weld itself is high and it's low on each side. That's not what I want because that's going to be hard to hide. Uh, I want the weld to be low so that way the weld has a valley and I fill that with the fiberglass filler. So that's where I'm getting into the hammer and dolly. And where this is straight across here, that is, means it's level and straight across, but that's, you know, very, for my abilities, that's very rare to have it dead straight across um, for the amount of time that I'm spending. I'm sure if I spent a ton of time on it, um, I'd be able to get it dead straight and level, but that's not this car. This car, the ideal spot is like this, where it's just a little valley, or like this, where it's a little valley um, that will accept the filler. So that's what I want. Um, like I said, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll work this a bit, and I'll have it out because this is a bit wide for me. This 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 deep spot is a bit wide, so I will work this to bring this back out a little bit with a hammer on dolly technique where I stick the dolly behind and I hammer on the front of it and it comes back. So I'll play with that. I'm no expert at that either, so don't be taking this as advice. This is just how I'm gonna do it. And like I said, this is going to be a patina build car, so really it's, it's what I'm doing here is just way overkill anyways. Um, later on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get at the back side of this with uh, probably a whack of seam sealer and I'll, and I'll be able to coat that all. Um, I've got inner wheel well work to do all that crap. The other thing that I said I was going to do today is make noise. No. Um, the other thing I said I was going to do is skin this door. So I've gone ahead and pulled the hardware and the trim off the front side of it. I'm going to skin it and get the carcass out of here because it's in my way. And, uh, and then I have to, I'll have to prep that panel up and, uh, and get it ready for uh, install. Install. Still it. 
still slow car fix. Still fixing car very, very slowly. Um, you saw me scan a door. That was cool. Uh, it doesn't take that long. So what you would use this for, um, if you had a rotten door, now you wouldn't hack it across the top like I did because I obviously wasn't care caring about saving it. But if you had a rotten door and you wanted to uh, replace the skin, you, would cut it, you could cut it off that way where you grind the edges off the flap wheel. And then uh, the new one will have a lip that slides around it and then you paint it with a hammer and then stitch it and uh, stitch weld it. And then uh, that's your door skin replacement. Uh, but that's not what we're doing right now. Um, so, uh, I'll show you why I skinned that door. Okay, so the infamous Wolverine cut. Uh, looks like it was hacked with a Wolverine. If you check out some of my other videos, you can see that this was filled with like rags and fiberglass and all kinds of garbage. Um, so was the bottom corner, which is why it's all gone and I'm doing half quarter. Uh, I didn't do full quarters because uh, the cost to do full quarters and to get them here or for me to go get them was more than I could stomach uh, at the time and uh, this is going to work. So um, I skinned the door because the door has a crown which is the same crown as over here on the car. So it's hard to see because my clamps are in the way and I'm doing this single-handed, but uh, see if the, this gives you an idea of what's going to happen here. So I'm going to use this panel, part of this panel, to uh, fill that spot. I'm going to have to fill these trim holes and stuff because obviously they're going to be in the wrong spot. But uh, I'm going to use this panel because it's the same profile. And this is the front door from the four-door. So I'm going to use that panel to uh, I checked, I've got tons of real estate here and I don't have to get into the door handle holes. Um, and I can take it right up to that seam that I was talking about earlier. It's going to cover this Wolverine gash. You know, so this is rough here. I'm going to go back, you know, an inch. And this here, just because I don't want a seam here and then have a seam right here, even though this one's metal finished nicely, in my opinion, and, and it's ready for filler. Even though that's all pretty and everything, uh, I likely will still take this uh, door panel over here because like, there's perforation here, so I at least have to come this far anyways. So if I'm coming that far anyways, I might as well, even though it's rework, I might as well just take it all the way out to here and try and line the seam up with something around here. I can get rid of this little dent without having to hammer it back out. All that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know if I said this before. No, I did. I did say this before. These are aftermarket pieces. These uh, window frame things. Don't buy them. They're shit. I've been fighting with them ever since I got them. They weren't cheap. Um, I would have been far better to go ahead and do what um, some other people have done, including uh, Dan uh, at DD Speed Shop, where you cut the pillar from the uh, four door car, move it back to four and a half inches or whatever it is, um, and then and then graft the door panel in, because pretty much that's what I did anyways. The only difference, difference is I didn't use the uh, four-door door pillar. I have this new one that I paid way too much money for. And then I have to still do all this crap and make it all fit. And, it, and it's, it's not, in my opinion, it's not a good piece. It's a gold star or golden star or golden wheel or golden horseshoe or some sort of golden something. And, uh, and they're not that great, in my opinion. Um, so it could be that it's just my application uh, that's kind of a problem because this car is a heap shit but um, it's going to be uh, less of that as I go forward alright so I'm going to call it on this one I, I uh, was having some trouble getting inspired to work on this thing again because uh, it was a little sour over the back of the uh, the back of the car and how the trunk lid wasn't fitting and and I was having all those struggles. So I'm re relieved that I've got that figured out, even though it costs me a little bit of money to buy new pieces for each side. Uh, when they come on their way and I, and I can, I'll be relieved when I can weld them in 
and put the uh, tail pan on and final weld it on and secure it to the trunk floor and have actually have some structure back in the car. And when I have the structure back in the car, then I can start getting into what the hell am I doing with the wheel wells and all the stuff that's behind the lower quarters. In the meantime, I'm just going to keep puttering away at uh, the welds that I have to do anyways, like all the stuff on the quarter panel fixing the upper quarter sections. Uh, would I have been better off to go with full quarters? Absolutely, yeah. But it was like uh, three times the price. And um, for this car being a patina car, it doesn't really matter anyways. I'm finishing the welds to what I think is satisfactory and, and I'm going to uh, protect it so it doesn't rot any further. Uh, and the reality is it's a four-door that I turned into a two-door and I've bastardized a hundred different ways and it's not going to be anywhere near original. It's going to be exactly what I want, so it's not going anywhere anyways. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, making some progress on it. This winter is going to be the metalwork winter. When this, uh, when all the metalwork is done, and, the, and like there's things like my good doors need work. Um, so I, there's a lot, there's a lot. But it's okay. What the hell else am I doing anyways? Uh, it's either this or, or work a bunch of overtime, so I would rather do this and I already worked a bunch of overtime. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, check out my other videos. Check out my buddy Andy that I was talking about that's dirt biking across the world or whatever he's doing. Um, yeah, this is the biggest project I've taken on. I've taken on some big ones, but this is, this is the biggest because I didn't really start with hardly anything. Uh, see you later.